So here's a periodic table. Um, <clears throat> there are um, ways of categorizing the elements in a periodic table. So first of all, um, a periodic table lists the, all the known elements. Um, each of these letters or combinations of letters is the symbol for the element. H is, for example, is hydrogen, Li is lithium, Na is sodium, and so on. And in this periodic table, as in most, there is uh, also listed the atomic number. Remember, that's the number of protons. Um, that's the number in this periodic table that's above the symbol. So titanium has an atomic number of two. The number beneath the symbol for the element is the average atomic mass. So titanium's average atomic mass is 47.867 AMUs. <clears throat> the periodic table, the way it's arranged, is um, in such a manner that elements that have similar properties are in the same column. And these, these properties um, are periodic. Each, each of these rows is called a period. Each of these columns is called a group. So for example, if we look at nitrogen, phosphorus, and arsenic, um, we know that they have similar chemical properties because they're in the same column. We also categorize any element that's to the left of this staircase that I've written in here. Anything to the left of that is a metal. Anything to the right of that is a non-metal. Um, and we're going to look at other ways of, um, um, you know, kind of categorizing elements in this in the periodic table. In this one here, um, like the key says up here, the box is green. It's a gas at room temperature and pressure. Blue, a liquid at room temperature and pressure. White, solid. And if it's yellow, that means it's artificially prepared. This first column here, um, lithium, sodium, potassium, and so on, these um, elements are called alkali metals right here. This column, they're called alkaline earth metals. This column, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, astatine, these are called halogens. And this column, helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, radon, these are called noble gases. These two periods here, these rows, called, this one is called the lanthanides, this one is called the actinides. And when you look at different periodic tables, they vary slightly in what element they start with, but there's reasons for that we'll get to later. Um, <clears throat> these numbers up here, the blue ones are the one, two, three, four, numbering the columns. Um, that's one system for numbering each column, you know, column 14, 15, and so on. The red ones, the 1A, the 2A, um, 3A, 4A, that's a different way. That has some different information, which we'll see when we talk about what are called valence electrons in a different module. So, <clears throat> a compound, okay, when we combine two or more elements, we get a compound. Um, and we're going to categorize those for now as two basic kinds of compounds an ionic compound, um, which consists of a cation, remember that has a one or more positive charges, and an anion one or more negative charges. Um, for the simple compounds we're going to see here that cation is going to be a metal. Um, metals form cations when they're in ionic compounds, in ionic compounds. That's when you think about it. When nonmetals are in ionic compounds, they form anions. And so when you combine a metal and a nonmetal, you tend to get uh, an ionic compound, something with a cat that with a positive one or more positive charges, the cation, which is the metal, and the anion, which is the nonmetal. When you write the formula, and you'll learn how to do this a little bit, um, for an ionic compound, the cation always goes first, the anion always goes next. So um, here, mercury is the cation, it's a metal, and oxygen is the anion, it's a nonmetal. The bonds, the way that these atoms are held together are called ionic bonds. It's basically opposite charges attracting each other. We'll get into that more later. Um, molecular compound is what you get when you combine only nonmetals. Um, for example, this com example, this compound here, sulfur dioxide. Um, sulfur, if you look at the periodic table, it's to the right of that staircase, and so is oxygen. So these guys are both nonmetals. No metals, no cations in this compound. 
And so this is a molecular compound. The way that these atoms are held together, it's very different than in an ionic compound. In an ionic compound, what holds the atoms together are opposite charges. Here, they form what are called covalent bonds. They can have a single, double, or triple covalent bond. And we will look at those more in a later module too. So knowing that an ionic compound consists of a cation and an anion, um, if we know what the, if we know what the charge on the cation is and the charge on the anion is, we can tell what the formula for that compound is. All we do is we balance out the charges. We have to have all the um, charges balanced. And so let's say aluminum, it ends up that when, when it's in an ionic compound, aluminum forms a plus three charge. Oxygen, when it's in an ionic compound, forms a negative two charge. So when we combine these, we have to have the same number of positive charges as negative charges. Well, the least common multiple of three and two is six. So that ends up, it ends up that the simplest formula, the one that we would write, is one that has six positive charges and six negative charges. To do that, we need two aluminum atoms, ions, and three oxygen or oxide ions. Um, so the formula for this compound would be Al2O3. A shortcut for figuring this out is if we write out the, the ions with their charges and just take the number without the charge and put it as a subscript for the opposite um, atom, we'll get the formula. So this 2 goes down here. This 3 goes down there, we get Al2O3. The only thing we have to watch out for, guys, is if we get a um, denominator that can be div um, divided by a number greater than 1 into both of those. So, so let's say we get a 2 and a 4. We have to reduce it and make it 1 and 2. You'll see that later. In a molecular compound, there are no charges. That's where sometimes people get confused at first. Ionic compounds have a cation and an anion. Molecular compounds non-metals only, there are no charges. Um, so don't worry about those. So this is an example of a molecular compound again. No charges, chlorine doesn't have a negative charge, oxygen doesn't have a negative charge, no positive charge, nothing like that. Um, this just says that in this molecular compound, these are, by the way, these are both non-metals, which we know because they're both to the right of the staircase. We have two chlorine atoms and one oxygen atom. So, question is, molecular or ionic? Ionic. Probably be a good idea right now to pause the video and see what answers you get. So here we are. Welcome back. Um, this is going to be molecular. And the way we know that is that krypton and fluorine are both nonmetals. This would be ionic, the next one, because potassium is a metal. Sulfur and oxygen are both nonmetals. This one is ionic also because molybdenum is a metal, nitrogen and oxygen are nonmetals. By the way, in this compound here, when we look at it, these parentheses here mean that this subscript out here, this outside three, applies to everything in this compound. So in one unit of this compound, we know there's one molybdenum, molybdenum atom, three nitrogen atoms, and nine oxygen atoms. And this next compound here, it's also an ionic compound because chromium is a metal, oxygen is a nonmetal. And then this last one, it's molecular because bromine is a nonmetal to the right of the staircase, and so is oxygen. So, how do we know what charges are on these um, these atoms, these elements? Well, for um, some of them, you're just going to memorize, and those are the ones that you see right here in this. Um, version of the periodic table. Um, and it's, it's actually easier than it looks because everything in the first column, when it's in an ionic compound, has a plus one charge. Um, except for lithium, um, excuse me, not lithium, um, everything in the second column, um, except for beryllium. Beryllium is kind of strange. It can do different things. Sometimes it has a plus two. Sometimes it has an actually negative charge. So we'll look at that later. But everything here has a plus two charge. Um, now, the transition elements, most of them, the ones where there are blank boxes here, they can have more than one kind of positive charge, like iron usually forms either a plus two or maybe a plus three. Um, and that's, those are kind of special. We're going to look at those in a minute. Um, 
Um, over here, to the right of the staircase, these are anions, so these are nonmetals, and everything in this column forms a negative 3, above the staircase anyway, negative 2 here, negative 1 here for the halogens. Um, by the way, noble gases, which you don't see here, typically, well, they, they do not form ions very easily, so we don't see those in ionic compounds. So memorize this. It's going to be very, very important. We're going to use it all the time. Okay. Polyatomic ions. Um, these are, most of these are anions, except for the first two, which are cations. Um, and these pop up all the time. It is, it's going to be very useful for you guys to memorize these. Um, what these are... Are, these are usually, not all the time, like most of the time it's all nonmetals, but they have a charge, which is different than if they didn't have a charge. If we had like, I don't know, ClO2 with no charge, that's a molecular compound. Um, but ClO2 with a negative charge, that's a polyatomic ion. Totally different beast. Um, most of these, like I said, are nonmetals, but sometimes there's a metal thrown in there. But we don't have to worry about charges on the metals in this case. All we know all we care about is that, for instance, in permanganate, this one right here, um, the whole thing has a charge of negative one. So memorize the names, the, the formulas, and the charges. It's going to be very, very helpful for to, to know that. Um, there are eight more that you should add to your list. These eight right here. And they have a. There's a pattern here actually. Um, notice that these four on the left here, they all have one bromine, and they have one, two, three, or four oxygens. They all have a negative one charge. And the pattern is hypobromite, and then we take the hypo away with two oxygens is bromite, three oxygens is bromate, see that AI becomes an A, and then four oxygens per bromate. Uh, same pattern for iodine, hypoiodite, iodite, iodate, periodate. Um, chlorine also does this, but it's already in that table that I showed you. There's a hypochlorite, chlorite, chlorate, perchlorate.